What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel, Sports Junkies Podcast. Make sure you guys subscribe today to become a junkie. Uh, look forward to some more content from your team. I expect USC fans to be in here. I do expect them to be in here. And if you guys, you guys I mean, want to another fan base too, Oregon. Oh yeah, we got another. Oregon I know, to I know, Oregon's going to be in here. So <clears throat> we might have to, we might have to do some trash talking in that in the, in the comments. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't you know. know last I mean? time that I remember this stuff going down, it was. It was like a three long day stamp, just trash talking from Kansas City fans to mm-hmm. who, who was the other team? Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. On the channel, there's a video called "The Problem with the Oregon Ducks," and in that video, I did I, I might have said that Oregon was the father of the Pac-12. Um, and I also stated in that video that was UCLA headed to greatness, where where we're about to see something crazy from USC, where they about to at least be able to compete because Oregon has run the Pac-12 for a while, um, which is even crazier to think. They, they don't win the, the conference every year. They've had some years where, you know, other teams have stepped up. But now that Oregon is doing as good as they are with recruiting and, you know, how they're building their team, it's really going to take a, you know, no other team in the Pac-12 is really doing that much when we talk about recruiting and as, as good as Oregon is. So Oregon, I think, is about to become like the Bama or the Ohio State or the, the Clemson to their conference, I would say I would say Ohio State, just because Ohio right. State has those days where they can get beat. Right, but not really that they they aren't good, but like the Big Ten's better than the ACC, but it's not as good as the SEC. Yeah, but I will say this: USC is about to become the Georgia to the Bama of the SEC. Now, I'm look look. I'm be honest with you because I even said this. I'm be honest with the viewers. Mm-hmm. I didn't know USC played as well as they did last year. I'm be honest because really- like we said. We said this before. Pac-12 is complaining about not being viewed on the East Coast. I didn't even know USC went five and one last year. Mm-hmm. It was a surprise to me. The only loss they had was the Pac-12 championship game, but, and that surprised me. But really, I think really the main thing we need to do, Cameron, um, before we hop into this video, is um, make sure we just give our thanks to USC for giving us JT Daniels because it looks like we're going to be building oh, a pretty yeah, dangerous sorry. season. So that's something I almost forgot to um, do. Thank you guys so honestly, much. Honestly, like both both teams have quarterback yeah because slovis is projected to be a first round quarterback projected to be one of the top quarterbacks in the nation this year and jt daniels is uh we're still trying to figure stuff out so we'll see really what jt daniels is all about this season i mean he looked pretty good last year he brought a new dynamic to georgia's offense so um slovis has oh, also yeah. done the same for usc because he has looked he looked phenomenal last last season um they lost to oregon you know that oregon defense is uh not um not really a team you just want to you want to face and luckily they don't face them this season um the usc trojans trojan horses trojans i don't know what you want to say california um look, i'm gonna be honest with you you said you said oregon was the father of the pac-12 and i mean to that extent today i can agree with that but you can't forget about the founding father the founding father USC. Yeah. yeah you had reggie bush mm-hmm. East breaking ankles. Te- the Texas and USC game is still one of the greatest college football games of all time. Yes. Now, if you've never watched that game, watch it, please. Oh, yeah. It is the greatest game of all time. Mm-hmm. You, who who was that? Who was that quarterback for them? I mean, they they had Carson Palmer, but who was the who was the quarterback of that game? I forget his name now. Uh, oh my goodness, it's Matt something, isn't it? Matt Liner. Matt Liner, isn't it? I don't know. It's Matt Liner, isn't it? I, could, I, I, could, I think it is. I think it's Matt Liner. He also was in the Heisman race, and I think he won a Heisman mm-hmm. in that sense. USC, when they had, they had Pete Carroll as their head coach. Yeah, they did. During that whole thing. Yep. They were a crazy team, and then they had all their little, I think it was like a scandal went down there and all that. Ed Orgeron was the coach at one point. Mm. It, was, it was, everything was going downhill, and they looked like they're completely back. They went 5-1 and one last year. Lost a Pac-12 championship game, which is honestly great. And you have Kadon Slovis, top quarterback in the nation. Not the top, but he is a top quarterback. And, I mean, you did lose Amon Ross St. Brown to the yes. draft. But you also have a sophomore receiver stepping up. Or I think he's a junior now, Drake London. Mm-hmm. He, he should play really good for y'all. But, I mean, let's, let's just talk about how this team is going to look this season. How, how do you how do you view this team this season? Well, I'm viewing the first thing is first off is that USC is definitely back, and I definitely think they're a pretty good team. Now, like I told you, Oregon is doing some absolutely dangerous things with their recruiting, especially now with the NIL. 
Uh, there's a video on the channel where I say who benefits the most, and that team is definitely Oregon, and I'm talking about over the entire NCAA. Um, exclusive Nike content, um, the jerseys them themselves, being on that on that West Coast. So USC isn't a team that's gonna really I think I feel like take a downgrade either though. I mean they're LA and they have Snoop Dogg as one of their biggest fans. I'm not worried about that's Snoop Dogg. That's an easy Dogg. promotion right there. I mean, I'm not worried NIL. about Snoop Dogg. Okay. For it. NIL. I mean, Come who's on, gonna man. go to who's going who's going to USC so they can take a picture with Snoop Dogg for a break? Come on, man. Nobody worry about Snoop Dogg. I'm just saying I'll the NIL you. deal with USC is not as bad as everybody points it out to be. I'm not saying it's people not point bad. out to be bad, but it's, it it's won't be better. bad. Not being in California, I think players will get some good opportunities. I mean, I'm you in LA. I'd be surprised if Slovis hasn't already signed something. Exactly, even being in LA, that's important. But um they 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 and i think it's it's not i'm not gonna say it worked last year because they got um because they got the number one player Corey foreman in the in the draft who was teasing you know georgia but you know uh, you, you, we knew that wasn't happening um they're definitely improving a lot i think um and i think it started with getting Corey foreman it just shows clay helton's kind of trying to build trying to build a, a, a pretty dominant team second overall recruiting class in the pac-12 obviously you know who they're behind and you know the year before they were the 12th overall class in the Pac-12. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. So every now and then they can grab. You know, uh, sorry to interrupt, but like I feel like we 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 did talk about this a little bit, and it's Oregon have they can just dip their toes into California when they want mm -hmm. and grab those top players because they they are the top team on the West Coast. And not saying that USC isn't good, but they it, it's an obvious difference. Right. But I mean, since the hiring of Clay Helton, you can see the drastic change of USC becoming the program that they used to be as they were a top team on the West. And I mean, me and you both said it looking at this year, they look to have a pretty good record. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. But this team needs to first improve recruiting, like you were just saying. Mm -hmm. And they the first thing I feel like they need to do is just claim their own state back. You have teams from all over the nation grabbing players out of your state. And I mean, I'm not saying that's not going to happen because your state is so big and there's so many good players there, but yeah, the top players there should, they not all should be yours, but you should have a lot of the top players in your state because you should be the best team in your state. And Easy. and I think they're starting to do that. I mean, their top, their top like six recruits I'm looking at now are all from California. So it's, it's, it's good that they're doing that but like you said they they remind me of that scary movie scene where he's got the pie and everybody's reaching their hand in there and taking their piece out like oh you got this top recruit uh bama's like yeah mine i'll take because bryce young is a is a california native you know and and remember they were able to keep uh jt daniels you know obviously he didn't work out there he, he had the injury and slovis was looking the part you know but like i said one thing i will say is that we, we we just talked about how oregon was doing some crazy things but i believe it or not I still don't feel like usc is unable to be oregon i think oregon could slate pull some stuff off you know I mean, not oregon but usc i think usc i mean they were dominated in the pac 12 championship game they lost by seven but i really don't think oregon is one of those teams that can't be beaten if, if that makes any sense. Like, you look at Ohio State in the Big Ten, whoever that's, they're that's playing. Why, that's why I said we should compare them to Ohio State. Yeah. Because Ohio State, given the, that Saturday, they can be beaten by a conference team. And USC is the conference team in the Pac-12 to not take over, but to be Oregon's rival. Well, Oregon Oregon's does I don't think Oregon has the power that Ohio State has. You know, that's what I'm saying. Oh, no. I'm saying USC has better chances of beating Oregon then Wisconsin has chances of beating Ohio State. Then yeah. maybe Georgia has chances of beating Bama or Pittsburgh or North Carolina has a beaten Clemson. So USC is one of those teams we got to look at and say, what type of day are they going to have? They had an undefeated regular season. Sadly, they did lose to Oregon. But um, with the, you know, the extended schedule and Slovis, hopefully Slovis just takes leaps this year, and I think he will. Like I said, he's projected to be a top quarterback in the nation. He's pro projected to be a, a first-round quarterback over JT Daniels, you know. And 
I think USC is definitely starting to find their identity as a team. And we saw that last year. They took a massive step forward uh, from the 2019 season. You know, that loss to Oregon, you know, Oregon is Oregon, but I think they'll be more prepared this time come around. And that's if they make the Pac-12 championship game, which I'm pretty sure they will. Their schedule doesn't look to be anything too difficult, but, you know, it's the Pac-12. Um, they do face Notre Dame, so that's interesting. But one thing, one thing I will say about USC is compared to other teams that are like the second best in the conference, they stand out to me the most because Oregon is still trying to build their team to dominance where Ohio State, Clemson, Bama, they're already there. So they're already, at that dom- they're they, already they there. Consistent playoff exactly. Runs. Oregon is still trying to take those leaps and USC is slowly building those leaps as well. We saw that they got the number one player in the in the in the world last year in recruiting. So I think that's the I think that's another thing is that I think Oregon grabbed Kayvon right under USC's nose. Like yeah, I think he was like second team on his list was USC. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it was. It's crazy because yeah. I feel like a lot of players are like their top of three. Like USC. They like USC, but it's just they there's those better recruiters. They don't man. have that last. Like yeah. it's like you. You look at teams like Ohio State and all that. Yeah, they're good. But like the teams like Georgia, Oregon, you know, USC, they're always in a top three. Mm-hmm. But like sometimes, I mean, Oregon loses players as well. But I mean, there's always those other teams have that one where they're like, okay, well, if you come here, you're guaranteed to win almost every game. And you're just like, okay, well, obviously I'm going to go there. I want to win. And USC can't guarantee wins for their students. But as they are trending upwards now, I feel like not. They can't just start doing it. Where they can be like, "Hey, we're going to at least be in the Pac-12 championship yeah. at this point in their their state." They just be like, "Hey, we have the best team in the state of California. If you want to come to California, come to us. We are the best team in California. Right. The only team you would even have to train for basically is Oregon. I'm not saying the other teams are bad, but Oregon is our rival at this point. We aren't worried about bottom dwelling with U- UCLA because mm-hmm. you two UCLA was better than them. Yes, it was like the early 2010s. But now you're looking at USC now, and they are, I wouldn't say a top team in the country, but they are for sure a top 20 team in the country. Yeah. And, and that's going to be big for their recruiting now. And I, I think maybe a lot a lot of their, their success last year was built off that 2018 class they had, because that 2018 class was dangerous. Uh, they had four or five stars, three from California, which obviously we know JT Daniels, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Elijah Griffin. So... You know, and remember Isaac Taylor Stewart, who was considering Georgia as well. We lost, we lost to USC. So, I think a lot of this this USC team we're seeing right now is um, our guys building off of that 2018 class that they had and getting us to now. They haven't really pulled in a class as dangerous as that 2018 class because that 2018 class is a mix of offense and defense. So far, they've 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 you know they've struggled to really bring in that those those top you know, commits and, you know, obviously excluding Corey Foreman, you know, number one player in the world. So that's definitely somewhere you gotta, you gotta, you, you know, improve. And I, I, we said earlier that they weren't getting those California. They're definitely getting recruits from California. That's happening, but they aren't, they aren't, they, they, they need more pipelines from around the the states and it's going to be hard to get someone from the east coast which is where most of the top talent is which is why the sec is so good to go that's, all that's the way thing. to california I don't, think, I don't think it is i don't think it is that hard just because you are usc in california like you you're in la players and people in general just want to go to la so if you're offering them a full ride scholarship and that, that's where i'm saying the guaranteed wins where you're like hey we're going to the pac championship if you want a chance to win your conference and have a a big stage because USC is a, a national team. Everybody knows USC. So like, if you want recognition from scouts with a trusted team like USC, who has pumped out NFL players day in and day out, and you want to come to LA, come to USC. It's that simple. I'm gonna be real with you. And I cannot that, believe you just said it's not that hard to get guys from the East Coast to go all the way to California. There's a lot that plays in the recruits when they commit you know a lot of guys a lot of of guys don't want to go all the way across the country you know what i'm saying a lot of guys still do want to be close to their family look at brock vandegrift from oklahoma switching from oklahoma to georgia but not only are these recruits on the east coast 
but they're closer to schools like Georgia, Alabama, Clemson, I mean, Ohio State, you know what I mean? Florida, LSU, all these teams they could go to. Why, why, would, why do I need to commit to USC if I can stay here and potentially go to a team that will better, I might succeed better on? I will get more of a national I mean, spotlight you, on. You, you are, you are one hundred percent correct with that. But the pipeline states, not really pipeline, but the states that everyone wants is Georgia, Florida, Texas, California. And, and those are mm-hmm. top four states. And California puts and out crazy you, talent. You notice that two of those teams are touching the Atlantic Ocean. One of those teams is in the middle of the country. And the last one's touching the Pacific Ocean. So that's why we do see, like you said, those teams like Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, Florida. I mean, LSU was building some good recruiting classes. They are going to those teams just because some of them don't even have to leave their state. Whereas California, yes, you have a lot of talent coming out of California. I mean, Georgia has gotten plenty of Calabasas receivers Mm -hmm. from California. I mean, that's a high school in California. And that's why I feel like it's not that it's not that hard to get those players, but it is definitely possible to get those players over there. Because if you're if you're USC, you live in a pipeline state, like you say, mm-hmm. pipeline, uh, for, for California. The only other state that I feel like is the top four state as well, Texas. That's your closest one. Whereas if you're Georgia, you're touching another state and you're in a state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. California is so big and Texas is so big, but they are also far apart. They have several states in between them. And that's where I feel like if you can't even get Texas, you have to reach for those Florida and Georgia. And I'm not saying that I, I, I sort of miss that. It is, it is obviously it is hard, but I feel like it is definitely doable because you're in California. You you are a pipeline state and you the, the top talents are in Georgia and Florida. So you're obviously going to have to reach for those players. And like I said, Georgia just took Calabasas receivers. Right. So it is definitely doable. It's definitely doable. Um, But it's almost impossible. We look at the East Coast and, you know, Clay Helton isn't one of the best recruiters in the nation. Let's get that off. Let's let's just state that off rip. You know, all respect to the guy. He's a great coach. He's a great coach, but But he is not one of the best recruiters in the nation. There's so much. There's so many levels of coaching. You rarely have a coach who's a great coach and a recruiter. And you see the teams that you can tell the teams that are great coaches and have great recruiters. They stand out. And there's only there's only like six or seven of those 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 teams. Um, I think Mario Cristobal might be added to that conversation because he's doing great. But Clay Helton, how can he battle with a guy like Kirby Smart or Nick Saban or Ed Orgeron or Dabo Swinney? I mean, for it, for Christ's sakes, Ryan Day. I mean, I feel like I feel like to to answer that question, I'm, I'm gonna try to answer it as best as I can personally. Okay. You have to. I'm not saying Kirby Smart did it for because he can't recruit, but Kirby Smart hired guys around him that could recruit. Mel Tucker was one of our best recruiters Facts. on that team yep. not that long ago. So Clay Helton will have to hire assistants around him that can scout better than he can and I feel like not that he hasn't done that I just feel like he hasn't done it to the level that he can just because USC has a high budget they are a big team so they have the budget to go out and get these coaches I just feel like they haven't done it because who wants to go to that team that is you know was not on the rise before they're on the rise now so they can probably do it better now but who wants to go to that team it's like you you have Georgia right in front of you but this team that's going you know, six and six, seven and five every year is like, hey, help us out. Which team are you gonna go to? You can go to Georgia. You know, and like you just said with exactly. Kirby Smart, Kirby Smart has coaches around him that can recruit well, super good, well, great, good. With him recorders. being able to recruit recruiters. well as himself. Where is teams like Ohio State? A lot of their recruiting is built off the success the team has, the spotlight. Yep. Bama, the spotlight. Not gonna say they're not they're not good recruiters, but there was a story where it was like a recruit came to Bama and was like Nick Saban. Nick Saban. He 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 looked at a recruit. He said he picked up a national championship trophy. He said, "You want one of these? Then you know where to come." Because I'm gonna be real with you. No one's gonna spend four years at Bama without winning a ring. That's impossible. That's not gonna happen. 
that's not going to happen for a while. And Bama's getting better and better. We see what they're recruiting. So USC has to figure out how they're going to bring in recruits. Because obviously that's the big question with this team is how and great can they get recruiting? That's the, that's the thing is you said that that Ohio State, Bama, uh, you know, all those Oklahoma, those teams are good at recruiting be, mostly because they're not really just because of it, but that's a big factor in it, is their past. They've been proven to win these games. And I feel like that's where USC fell off is they didn't, not that they didn't capitalize off that, but Pete Carroll left. They didn't have good head coaches after that, really. Mm -hmm. So they had those dominant 05 run, the dominant, like the dominance in the 2000s. They had right. it. And I just feel like they didn't capitalize on it because if they capitalize on it, to like today, USC might be the best team in the nation, no doubt. Just because they didn't, I don't think they capitalized fully off of what they had. And you saying Bama just does that, and Ohio State probably does that, even though Ohio State doesn't have as many championships. Ohio State still a blue blood program, and they just say, "Hey, you want to do this? We've had these players do that. It's, it's easy to do here. Mm -hmm. Alabama, you want to win national championship? Players have done that every four years here, at least. You can go ahead and come here if you want a national championship. Oh, USC can't do that now. So you see, no. it's starting from ground. Like it's starting where Georgia started, really. Pretty much. Georgia can't say, "Hey, we had this national championship from." Almost what is it? It's 40 years now, 41 yeah, 40, years ago. You won that national championship. You want that? Yep. You want that? You can't come here every year for it, but if you work hard enough, you can honestly win it. Yeah, that's not going to exactly. cut it when you can go to Bama and they just be like, hey, you want a guaranteed one? Just come here. You only got to play. And the SEC, the SEC and these big teams, you got to consider they also spend millions. Like we were talking about Vanderbilt last last week, the, the, they spend yeah, millions the, the on their facilities. Millions on their facilities and recruiting alone. And Texas yep. and Georgia spent the most money alone with Alabama, and those teams always have consistent top recruiting classes. Yep. Texas doesn't have the top three, but Texas is always up there in the top recruiting classes. Mm -hmm. Yep. I just it just like it's hard for USC right now because they don't have the hardware here recently to do it. They have the hardware, just like Georgia has a national championship from 1980. They, Georgia has a hardware, but Georgia doesn't have it recently. Yeah. Who's going to want to be like, hey, you have a second place trophy for the national championship? Yeah. No one's going to be like that. Mm -hmm. They're going to go to Alabama and they're gonna be like, you have how many national championships? How many have you won in the past 10 years? And I'll tell you one, and I'll, and I'll tell you one thing. They definitely won't be able to show them a national championship, but they'll be able to show them that brand new $3 million facility we just built. Exactly. That's why teams are spending that money in those facilities. Exactly. Because they're like, hey, we don't have the hardware, but we have the facility and the tools needed to make you the best player that you can be and for us to possibly win that national championship. Mm -hmm. That's why you've seen LSU spend all that money. That's why LSU has one of the top facilities right now. It's because, yes, they did win the national championship and they have that hardware now, but it was mainly before they started that. They probably started that project before they won that national championship. Yeah, they have a, and so it's they, amazing, they just too. built it. They, they build those for recruiting and just to have a good... Because like you don't need all that to have a good facility. You don't need no reclining chairs, yeah. mini fridges, swords under the seats. You don't need that for a good locker room or facility for players. You do that so you can be above all the other teams with your facility. And that's... that's it's, it's just... USC... I haven't seen USC do no facilities like that. I, I mean, they could have a good facility. I don't really see anything about USC except for here this last year and today. Right. I don't really see anything about USC. I don't even need to so see they, it to tell you it's not on the level of what the SEC has been building. You know, and this is no disrespect exactly. to USC. I'm not trying to sound disrespectful, but just look at LSU's facility or Georgia's or Bama's, and you'll be like, oh, well, that's why nobody from the East Coast is going to go all the way to USC because they'll fly to USC for a visit, and then they'll see that they're just with their their campus itself. You know, regardless of it being in in, in LA, it's just not it's not up to par with how they how great they look over on the east coast so it's um it's, it's really it's just a lot of levels to recruiting and i know we've, we've sounded kind of negative here but let's um let's talk about their schedule because we were on we, we, we talked this about is a big positive a this yeah. is a big positive yeah uh, usc fans will be happy mm -hmm. uh you can go ahead and start off i started off last time you started off you last time start off. um usc is gonna lose usc is gonna lose one game next season Yep, yep, Notre Dame. And it will be Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Um, it will be Notre Dame. Utah team, is a I good team say, that I feel like you want to watch out for. Washington State, they, they just have a, always have a good quarterback who can 
put up points. Arizona, Arizona is absolutely awful. Arizona State. I feel like might I feel be like cooking the teams something that up. you have to look out for is mm-hmm. is Arizona State, Notre Dame, and Utah. I feel like those are the teams you have to look out for. Yeah. For this team, but I feel like USC is at that point right now where they're just better than those teams. We're not worried about BYU. BYU doesn't have Zach Wilson no more. Mm-hmm. Not saying that BYU is just going to be not going to win a game. Right. But I'm saying they're not on that level they were last year. Back off UCLA, the face of the earth. They have a good quarterback. They have a good quarterback, but they don't have. I don't think they have a good rest of the team. California, they just got dropped from Under Armour for a reason. Oh my god. Arizona State, <laughs> they have Jaden Daniels. They're a good team. Arizona, I haven't heard anything about Khalil Tate since his freshman year. Notre Dame, they just went to the AC Championship game for the first time with them being in a new conference. quarterback though. They're a great team. New quarterback, that's true. Utah, they just. They ba- they almost just went to the Pac-12 championship, or they just did, didn't they? Like two years ago, they went mm-hmm. to the Pac-12 championship. Didn't yeah, they? yeah, exactly. They're still a good team. They got Colorado, spanked by guess who? So Oregon. Yeah. Col- Colorado is just they're weird. They they'll have a ten win season, then they won't win a game. Yeah. Anyways, I don't. You just don't know how Colorado's going to do. Oregon State is Oregon State. Washington State they always have that gunslinger quarterback, but they don't have Mike Leach anymore, so we don't know how they're going to do anymore. Mm-hmm. Stanford they've been on a decline ever since Christian McCaffrey left. San Jose State is San Jose State. Pretty much. So you, that, that's why you only have to worry about those teams. I mean, not saying that USC has an easy schedule, but so what? how they're playing, they have an easy schedule. I mean... This, this is how they play. USC playoff bound in 2021? If if I'm saying if it was a... Because if they only playoff, lose to Notre Dame, and like I said, I feel like they have a realistic shot against Oregon. I mean, but, but that, this is, this is what if I'm they saying. do if, only if lose to Notre Dame, team, then this team is actually dangerous. So exactly. that means yes. they really, they realistically will have a shot against Oregon. So uh-huh. December 3rd, that could be it interesting. Could, it could be possible. It could be, and also that Notre Dame game is going to be a great game. Tune in for that 7.30 p.m. Saturday, USC at Notre Dame. It's going to be on October 23rd. Anyways, it's it's really, they if they lose to Notre Dame, which I feel like they will, and I don't feel like they'll lose by a lot. I feel like they'll lose by like a touchdown or two. It won't be by a lot. Mm-hmm. And then you turn around, and you're obviously going to make it to the Pac-12 Championship because you're going to go undefeated in your conference play, according to our uh, prediction. You have a chance against Oregon. And if it was a 12-team playoff, USC would have a 100% chance to make it to the playoff, I feel like. Yeah. But since it's still that 14 playoff right now, you have a chance. But if, if you see Bama... Ohio State, Clemson, play like they normally do. That's only one spot open. And to be honest, the way people are predicting Georgia to play, Georgia could make it. The people, the way people are predicting Oregon to play, Oregon could beat you in the conference championship and make it. So it really depends on how much you score in games and how much you win those games by. Because if you lose Notre Dame by three or less or like by one, and you beat Oregon and the rest of your opponents handedly. There is, you could most likely make it to that that playoff, but if you are beating teams like Stanford, uh, Utah, Arizona State by only seven points, and then you lose to Notre Dame by two touchdowns, and then you go to Oregon and only beat them by one point, there is not that big of a chance for you to make it in the playoff. You know, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It is, there has been instances where teams haven't made it to the playoff just because their capability of scoring. And like that's the thing, like that that's been a big meme here recently. Is that people are like, oh, scoring matters, and then show how Washington got blown out, how Michigan State got blown out, and it's just, I feel like that's funny. But I mean, that will happen to USC if USC doesn't score as much points as they can possibly score. Yeah, like we just talked about and, offensive game. And with all due respect, I don't really think USC will only lose one game. I just that's the one game I see them. Like where I'm like, okay, I really think they're gonna lose that game. Like I'm 80 percent sure they will lose that game. But it, it's, they it's really the need to avoid. For LSU. They really need to avoid those any given Saturday games where they get upset. You know where they 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 play bad and they end up getting a, an L. That's the games they really need to avoid. If they can avoid that and just take the loss to Notre Dame at their stadium, they're in pretty good shape. Not, they're in great shape because. That, that, to me, sounds like a team that's dangerous. You know, regardless of them being in the Pac-12, of how strong the Pac-12 is or not, um, that Pac-12 championship, the rematch, let's see what let's see what uh, what USC's cooking up. You know, let's see what they're cooking up. It's going to be interesting. 11-1. <laughs> 11-1. 
That's our prediction. Eleven and one prediction for USC. We're in that two straight two straight episodes we had the same prediction. That's crazy. Yeah, it's usually cra- never like that. No. Nah. usually we don't we don't usually agree on, on stuff. I mean we kinda we kinda had some disagreements with the with with, the, with what we were saying about USC and recruiting, but I think it was pretty good. Anyway guys. Yeah. Subscribe today to become a junkie. This has been Sports Junkies Kid and Cam Cam Kid. Till next time guys. Yes sir. See you soon.